and GOP Senator Marsha Blackburn to discuss that. Senator, always great to have you back. I want to play a little bit of the Surgeon General and Jen Psaki, the White House spokesperson today from the White House, so folks can hear what they said. Sure. While it often appears innocuous on social media apps, on retail sites, or search engines, the truth is that misinformation takes away our freedom to make informed decisions about our health and the health of our loved ones. We've increased uh, disinformation research and tracking uh, within the Surgeon General's office. We're flagging problematic posts for Facebook uh, that spread disinformation. Uh, Senator, the one thing that struck me about this, well, there are a lot of things, but I thought things that were called misinformation, censored, blocked a year ago, some of that is mainstream thought now. Um, so who decides what's misinformation yes. or disinformation? Well, the Biden administration wants to do this. They told us they wanted to have an office of truth or misinformation, and people kind of laughed at that. But what they're seeking to do is take away your First Amendment rights and have a thought police or a language police and have a state-sponsored message. And if you don't fall in line with the state-sponsored message, then they will give you state-sponsored censorship. So that is their goal. It is where they're headed. And we need to realize that doing away with the First Amendment is one of their goals. Well, let me ask you this. Does this actually now help former President Trump in his lawsuits against some of these social media groups? Because he's trying to, to argue in some sense that they are acting yeah. as government actors. So if you have the government directly intervening here and telling social media companies to take specific actions, it would seem that's only going to help his lawsuits. I would think this would help his lawsuits. What we have known is that big media, big tech, the Democrats are all in cahoots. And you saw it on full display today with Jen Psaki's comments about what their demands were going to be and that basically they are going to be your thought and language police. Hmm. Okay, I want to ask you, too, about the Hyde Amendment. For uh, people, a lot of our viewers sure. are going to know, this blocks federal funding from going towards abortions. Uh, Planned Parenthood actually praising the Biden-Harris administration for being the first in decades to exclude the Hyde Amendment protections from the presidential budget, saying this, the Hyde Amendment blocks people who use Medicaid and other federal programs from being able to access safe legal abortion. This particularly harms people with low incomes, people of color, LGBTQ plus people, and young people. So they say, you're specific specifically hurting groups uh, who may need the most assistance if you support the Hyde Amendment. And it seems the president has actually evolved on this issue. He has evolved on this issue. Joe Biden had a history of always supporting Hyde Amendment language, which prohibits taxpayer funding of abortion. That is something that has been in federal spending bills for decades. And now the Democrats are wanting to take this out so that the federal government will begin to pay for abortion procedures. But what we're seeing is Joe Biden is becoming a radical, and you see him, instead of holding his long-held positions and staying there, he is evolving, if you will, to the far left, the squad, AOC, uh, all of the leftists, the Democrat Socialists of America. It seems as if Joe Biden mm -hmm. is seeking their approval and is not yeah. meeting the promises he made to the American yeah. people. Puts him in a tough spot. It is interesting, though, yeah. polling shows that even um, people who, some who d identify as pro-choice, the majority of Americans are against right. federal tax dollars being used for it. So we'll see how this plays out in the budgetary process. Yes. Senator Blackburn, thank you always for your time. Good to be with you.